second of the year at uh, in Georgia, and she has a great shot all the way up to the course. Oh, hello there. Welcome to a brand new segment that we call the Control Room. This is where we'll be giving you short histories and cool facts about certain aspects of railroading. Before we begin, however, I just received this telegram from my dispatcher. Let's see. At this current point in time, we do not know when Auto Train Number 3 will be shipped out. However, we do hope to have it done by at least the end of the month, possibly the 28th or 29th. Well, that's some sound news. Let's hope all goes well. In the meantime, how about I share with you some interesting history with today's topic? Today, I'd like to discuss the evolution of the auto train's consists. Ah, here it comes now, right on time. To preface, the consist of the auto train was ever evolving and ever changing throughout its 10 year history, so we'll only be focusing on specific eras per video. We'll be discussing the early consists this time. Specifically, between the years 1971 and early 1972. When the first auto train ran on December 6, 1971, the Consist was only 13 cars long at the time, most of them having been refurbished by Pullman Standard, with the exception of two cars at the rear. However, I'd like to save the first train for another time. Right now, I'd like to focus on right after the first run. With the success of the first train, the consists would, of course, grow to meet the demand of these passengers wanting to ride and take their cars with them. There are very few photographs taken of these consists in the early months of operation that the consist would be arranged by section. First, you had the auto carriers. At the time, these would always be at the front of the train. Next up would be the coach section. These comprised of former Santa Fe Big Domes, now known as Full Domes under auto train. There were three different types of full dome cars. You had the full dome coach, with coach seating on the upper level and a lounge area on the lower level. There was also the full dome dormitory. There was coach seating on the upper level, like the full dome coach. However, the lower levels were occupied by a nurse's station and berths for the crews to sleep, hence the name crew dormitory. It should be noted at this time, only the men would sleep in the crew dormitories in the dome cars. And the final full dome variant, the nightclub car. Only two of the full domes were configured this way, both with unique dark blue theme to them. This is where you would find your entertainment and your other nightclub features. This car would also be where the fully stocked bar would be located. Usually, every consist would have a conglomerate of all three types. Next up, you would have the food service section. In the beginning, Auto Train started out with five sets of twin-unit diners. It is believed, at the time of recording this, only five cars in total were ready for the first months. The food service section would comprise of both a movie buffet car and a kitchen dormitory car. The movie buffet car is where the passengers would sit down and eat after selecting their food from the steam tables on the buffet line, and afterwards, a movie would be played on the special TV screens. The kitchen dormitory cars served two functions on auto train. The first function being used as storage for the pre-prepped meals made by the Marriott Corporation. When being refurbished by Pullman Standard, the kitchens had their kitchen equipment removed and instead replaced with big steel refrigerators. The second function of the kitchen dormitory cars was to act as crew compartments for the hostesses of the train. At the time, the men and women train crew were separated this way. Next up is the sleeper section. While Auto Train did purchase their own fleet of sleepers from both the Union Pacific and Santa Fe, the refurbishment on these cars had not yet been completed. To compensate for this, Auto Train leased five 11 double bedroom sleepers from Union Pacific until the interior renovations could be completed on their own sleeper fleet. For a time, those sleepers ran on their previous owner's paintwork, but that's for the next episode. Finally, we would have the steam generator car, arguably the most important car on the technical aspect of the train. Before the widespread use of head and power, the steam generator cars would provide steam which would be used to make the cool air or the warm air for the air conditioning and heating units aboard each car. This was accomplished by a long network of pipe and hoses on the underside of the cars called the train line system. 
which was the bog standard for all passenger equipment at the time. And with that, we have reached the end of the consist. It should be noted that the passenger section of the consist would not be turned around at each terminus. Instead, the auto carriers would just be shuffled to whichever end of the train would be leading, whether it be the sleeper section for the northbound runs, or the coach section for the southbound runs. We'll let the entire train run past the camera so you get an idea of the consist in full. I want to thank you for watching this video. Next episode, I'll explain how the consist would be rearranged when more of the refurbished equipment came in from Pullman Standard, and after that, I hope to explain more of the acquisitions Auto Train would acquire in the later years. The second function was to act as Okay.